In the previous course, we've been working on this sidebar, which have a behavior for the mobile and a behavior for the desktop. So if I come back here, we can see that the sidebar is efficient. It is working very good. What I want to do here is to create a new page. And this new page is going to be called transactions.view. It's going to be the page of the transaction that we got here. So of course, I need to initiate my page transaction. And if I come back, there we go. But if I click on transaction here, nothing is happening. What I need to do is to come back to the sidebar. And on the sidebar here, we can see that I got a division with all the elements, but nothing is happening because nothing here is leading to the page transaction. So probably what I would like to do is to turn this div into a Nuxt link. The Nuxt link, it's a native component of Nuxt.js, which helped me actually to create a link. So we can see here that it didn't uh, move, but here I got my Nuxt link and here as an href, what I would like to put here is item.path. So remember, into our model, we got this list of paths here. So here what I can do is to make it dynamic and we should be good. So now here I'm on my overview, which doesn't exist actually, overview. It's the main page, so I can remove it. There we go. But if I go to transaction and I click here, look at this, suddenly we are on the page transactions with hello transactions as the URL. All right, so we've got those two pages working right now. What I want to do is to put some padding between those two pages, because here, let's say that we're going to come back to the page transactions. So I'm going to go to transactions here. Let's say that I would like to have some padding on the page. Okay. Let's say that I would like to have some space between the text and the border and the frame of my browser. Okay. If I do that into the page transaction, it will happen on every other page. I will need to put this paragraph here. Of course, I don't need to put directly the padding on every page. I would need to go to default and here I would put my padding to be sure that here the padding is appearing on every page that I display. Okay, so remember that everything you do on the layout will be actually reflected, repeated on every page here because the layout is appearing everywhere. Okay, so I got this, now I got my page transactions, I got my pa main page here. Now let's work a little bit on the main page. So I'm gonna come back here, I'm go going to go here, and here I'm going to do like a very basic job. Um, I'm going to order my application, actually every page on, on my app are going to have a little bit the same um, behavior. So what, by behavior, what I mean, um, it's that they are going to have the same sections and they are going to behave the same way. You will understand. Okay, so first I will have a header. This is my header. All right, there we go. Then I will have a main. So this is my main. So there will appear everything here. This is my main. And probably they will have a footer. So this is my footer. What I'm explaining right now, it's really basic HTML. Okay, so if you know HTML, what you do most of the time, you do you create the header, then into the main, you would have a section, then a footer, etc. etc. Why do we repeat this? Because for most of the project, not necessarily this one, because here it's a dashboard and probably it can be only client side. For most of the project, what you want to do is to be SEO friendly and respecting all the conventions of HTML help you to be SEO friendly. Here, it's not necessarily the case. We don't care. We don't want that this overview page would be on, um, on Google. Like all the dashboards, you don't necessarily want them to be on Google. Probably if you have a public app, you want to do it. Here we are supposed to be in some kind of private app. Okay, so I got my header, I got my main, I got my footer, and we still want to keep this same model. Okay, so let's say that in transaction, I would like to do the same. What I'm going to do instead, it's to create here, and this is just an exercise for you, I'm going to create a custom snippet with that model. So if you go here to um, your command bar and you type snippets, you have snippets, configure user snippets, and then you get access to these uh, uh, snippets dot code snippets here, and directly you arrive here. Okay, so let's say that here I got a model, and I'm going to show you that for, a, in instance, to create all the pages faster. 
I'm going to use a key called model. And let's say that the scope is going to be the view file. So in every view file, I would like to do it. Then I'm going to prefix. And let's say that the prefix is going to be exactly the same as key. It's going to be a model. Now what I want to do is here to put the body. And here in the body, I would like to copy paste this whole file as a string. However, if you look at my previews here, a vcomp that I'm using all the time, uh, you really got to um, create a new key in your array for every line. So basically, well, I can't do this, okay? I can't put my whole element here. What I need to do is to do this instead. Let's say that we're going to keep this one. And then I'm going to keep this one. And then I'm going to keep this space because I would like to have a space. And then I'm going to keep this template, et cetera, et cetera. You understood? So this is how you create your own snippet. Of course, this snippet, I'm not going to keep it because here it's really specific to this project. So or probably I'm going to keep it. I don't know yet, but it's just to give you an example. OK, so you see here I'm doing every line to create my custom snippet. And you probably want to do the same. Here, what I want to do, this is my section. There we go, etc., etc. So here, I do it manually just to explain to you um, that snippets are really useful. But I could just copy paste that into ChatGPT and it would do it for me. But just for to show you how it works. Okay, and finally, I got this element. All right, so we've got a full template that it's supposed to work. OK, so I'm just going to in increment in the right way my old snippet. And I'm going to come down here. And we should be good. Here we got an error. I don't know why. Expected comma. Here, there we go. OK, so now we've got our snippet called model. And what I can do is just to remove everything. And we're going to test it. So if I type model here, I can see that I got my snippet that has been recorded. And if I type enter, suddenly, there we go. And if I save here, I'm automatically indenting because I got uh, extensions that are doing it for me. OK, so it works for index. Let's go to transaction. I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to type model. And there we go. Our snippet is working perfectly. So we got our two pages here, transactions and the main page that irritate from the same model. Of course. If you would like, you could have a big page or you can just directly copy paste. But here, we assume that we are going to do it for every page. So we don't want to waste time, right? OK, that's great. So now I know how to do a custom snippet. I will do the basic of my overview page.